Now, from WYDC-TV, this is Big Fox News at 10. We begin in Elmira. Some residents waking up to several feet of snow today. Snow fell fast and hard overnight, leaving parts of downtown looking like the front of a Christmas card. Downtown Elmira saw more than 18 inches of fresh snow. This giant system causing dangerous icy roads, heavy snow, and putting tens of thousands in the dark. The storm dropped more snow in parts of the northeast than all of last year's winter season. As more than 50 million people are still under some kind of winter weather alert, some meteorologists warn snow isn't the only problem with this storm. Big Fox has team coverage for you tonight. We begin with Matt Kleindens, who joins us in Painted Post with how much snow the southern tier dealt with. Good evening. People are starting to dig themselves out after snowstorms covered much of the southern tier with snow last night. From Painted Post to Corning to Elmira, much of the area spent the day shoveling driveways, roads, and cars out of the snow. Some areas experienced as much as 12 inches of snow, causing winter weather advisories to be issued across the Twin Tiers. Businesses and schools throughout the area were closed as a result, and hospital systems like Guthrie closed some locations and canceled COVID testing for the day. Governor Cuomo issued a state of emergency to 18 counties as a result of the snowstorm. One of those counties includes Tioga County, which saw snow totals reach 30 inches around Binghamton. Cuomo says over 2,000 snowplows are out to clear the snow and urges New Yorkers to use caution while driving out and about. Reporting from Painted Post, Matt Kleindens, Big Fox, WYDC. Thanks, Matt. Now let's send things over to meteorologist Kim Walker, who joins us with a closer look at the snowfall levels in the area. Kim? Well, right about now, most of us are thinking a snowplow was a great investment. Take a look at these snowfall totals. We're talking about waist high snowfall, 42 inches in Birmingham. So that, I'm only 5'4", and so that's about right here to me. Uh, 21 inches in Elmira, a little bit less, about 10 inches less in uh, Corning, and about 9 inches in Hornell. So the farther north you go, the less we pick up. And we did see a lot of snow in the areas shaded in the dark blue closer to that nor'easter as it shifted to the Atlantic. So we did pick up a lot of snow. Unfortunately, we have more snow on the way for this weekend. I'll give you more details on that coming up. Late today, an FDA panel overwhelmingly recommended the agency authorize Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine for emergency use. The FDA is expected to agree and an emergency use authorization could come as soon as tonight or tomorrow. Meanwhile, hospitalizations and deaths in the U.S. keep setting records. John Lawrence reports. Confidence in COVID-19 vaccines is growing, according to Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar. It's clear that many Americans are learning that these vaccines are safe and extraordinarily effective. Roughly 20 million doses could be delivered before the end of the year, many of them for frontline healthcare workers. It was such a moment of pure joy and happiness um, and a moment of hope. Um, I haven't felt that light or that happy in months. The vaccine likely won't be readily accessible for most Americans until early to mid 2021. The demand is going to be so much higher than the supply initially. It's, it's going to be challenging. It's our best tool against COVID, but it's not here yet for everyone. And known COVID-19 cases in the U.S., like hospitalizations and deaths, keep climbing to record levels. We are not at the finish line yet especially as we approach the holidays. Health officials continue to stress the importance of being cautious and patient. We need to be safer with masks, avoiding indoor crowds, keeping distance. All of these things are doubly important now. We don't want any lives to be lost when vaccination is just a few months away. I'm John Lawrence reporting. A second coronavirus vaccine could be just hours away from clearing its final hurdle, and most Americans could soon be receiving stimulus checks from the government. Douglas Zader has more from Washington on the status of relief negotiations on Capitol Hill. Well, we do seem to be closing in on a deal here. Stimulus checks are back on the table. We may be approaching a rare moment of harmony here on Capitol Hill. For just a few minutes yesterday, Democratic Senator Tim Kaine played along with Republican Senator Lamar Alexander. We call it the spirit of the holidays, but both parties could soon be singing the same tune. We agreed we will not leave town until we've made law. And that law, that relief package they're all talking about, could include government cash for most Americans. 
Leaders from both parties are nearing an agreement that extends extra unemployment benefits for four months and an extra $300 a week, as well as stimulus checks for most Americans in the neighborhood of perhaps $600. And there would be more relief for businesses, too, replenishing the Paycheck Protection Program with $257 billion. It's not a done deal yet, but we are very close. Also close, the Moderna vaccine. An FDA advisory panel meets today to decide whether to recommend it, perhaps joining the Pfizer vaccine already in use with more to come. Moderna, we're supposed to have FDA uh, emergency use approval hopefully today. And then don't forget, we also have AstraZeneca around the corner and Johnson & Johnson and Novavax and Sanofi, Glasgow Klein. So several vaccines um, definitely going to help us get to where we need to be sooner than later. And we may see some high-profile vaccinations in the days ahead. Vice President Mike Pence is scheduled to get the Pfizer vaccine tomorrow. President-elect Biden will get it next week. In Washington, Doug Luzader, Fox News. Some may say Christmas came early this year. Healthcare workers in Virginia are starting to get the COVID-19 vaccine, but it's a logistics challenge for the hospitals because of the vaccine's specific requirements. Victoria Sanchez reports. Santa arrived this morning with our vaccine. The special delivery days before Christmas is putting smiles on the masked faces of Northern Virginia frontline hospital workers. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. ICU nurse Ann Manley sees the COVID vaccine as the first step out of an emotional 2020. When I think back on this year, my head kind of spins. It's, you know, from the initial panic and fear to just extreme sadness and anger and exhaustion. The vaccine clinic for employees is a realization of a dream for a Nova CEO, Dr. Stephen Jones. It's a moment that we've been waiting for. We weren't sure it was going to come. So each of these boxes has 975 doses. The hospital system received enough vaccine for nearly 10,000 people. Each dose kept under lock and key and deep freeze. This really is a logistical challenge, not only the minus 80 degree freezer, but once we take it out, um, you can only have it at room temperature for two hours. There are actual timers that start when the vials are taken from freezer to pharmacist who thaw, mix and fill syringes. Those are carefully walked to awaiting nurses ready for the timed appointments. That's it. Yeah, you're all set. Awesome. Respiratory therapist Dustin Seitz calls the first of his two shots hope during a pandemic nightmare. I'm glad to be a part of this. Dr. Eric Osborne continues to care for some of the sickest COVID patients and stepped away from the ICU to get his shot before heading back. I think it's definitely the beginning of the end. I think the end is still a long ways away. The Cuomo administration will push forward with its planned minimum wage increase at the end of the month. On New Year's Eve, most wages across the state will increase from 1180 to 1250 an hour. The move was announced despite criticism from Republican lawmakers and business groups saying a wage hike would be detrimental to small businesses already struggling during the pandemic. The State Department of Labor made the decision saying that the wage increase wouldn't adversely affect New York's post-COVID recovery. The latest report from the U.S. Labor Department shows the job market continues to suffer. Another 885,000 people filed for first-time unemployment benefits last week. That's more than the 800,000 claims economists expected. And it's actually the fourth time in the past five weeks that first-time claims have increased. Meantime, continuing claims, which track the total number of Americans seeking jobless benefits, fell to 5.5 million. The latest figures are adjusted for seasonal factors. Mortgage rates dropped to another record low last week for the 15th time this year. Mortgage giant Freddie Mac says the average interest rate on a 30-year fixed rate mortgage dropped 2.67%. That's the lowest level in the history of the survey, which goes back nearly a half century. It comes as the Federal Reserve said it would hold interest rates near zero. The chief economist at Realtor.com says soaring buyer demand is keeping home sales at their highest pace in more than 15 years. According to the Mortgage Bankers Association, applications for purchases are up 26 percent from a year ago and refinances are up 105 percent compared to this time in 2019. Still ahead tonight, a 100-year-old wants to be the first on the list to get the COVID-19 vaccine when they arrive at his nursing home and for good reason. People are definitely excited. I know there's some apprehension too, um, 
just because it's so new and all of that. But I think overall it's um, an air of excitement. Why he's hoping to get the shot as soon as possible, coming up. Here's your local stock market update from Big Fox. Now, your Twin Tiers forecast from Big Fox. Tonight's Big Fox forecast is brought to you by William Matar. Good evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Kim Walker with your weather update. Of course, the snowfall came in feet instead of inches in many locations. More than a yardstick high in Binghamton, about 4200s, about 3400s in Owego, in uh, Elmira, around uh, close to around 22 inches in some locations, and around 14 inches in Corning. So a lot of snow to go around. And you know, for tomorrow, we are expecting those temperatures to once again and stay below freezing. So most of this snow will be sticking around. Unfortunately, very little melting during the day. However, we're going to see a little bit of sunshine during the day, and I think the sunshine will spend more time melting the snow than actually warming up the air, and that's why we're going to stay below freezing throughout the day. As you wake up tomorrow, if you haven't plowed, I think you're going to have to plow some of those uh, sidewalks, and it's going to be pretty icy as well. 21 degrees at 5 o'clock, and that doesn't really change through the 8 o'clock hour. Partly cloudy sky with very dry air that will be in place. It doesn't look like we have to deal with the wind though, thankfully there, but it's going to remain cold for your Friday and for Friday night. Those temperatures will be plunging down to the teens, maybe even below that in some locations out to the northeast. They're going to be well below uh, zero degrees and we are expecting cold air to stick around for your Friday. So I was telling you about some of the melting of the snow that will cause some black ice, especially as those temperatures warm up on Saturday It's going to refreeze again by the end of the day as those temperatures plummet down. So you're going to have to deal with some icy conditions over the weekend, unfortunately. So just take it easy, drive very slowly, and if it looks like it's pretty glossy. You definitely just want to ease up on the brakes. So we have another round of rain coming this weekend. I'm expecting it to arrive on Sunday. It's not going to bring as much snow as the previous event. So let me show you our future radar and put it into motion. By Saturday morning, there will be a few showers, but I think that will be well to our north. And then Sunday morning, a few flurries start off and then that will increase during the day. By your lunch hour, it looks like when you're done with uh, church, we're going to see some snow showers across our area and then by six o'clock, it looks like most of this will start to wind down a little bit drier conditions from Hornell to according to Elmira and then a few more flurries possible through the early morning hours on Monday before the system moves out of the way. But take a look at these lows down into the teens, mostly cloudy conditions tonight. There will be some periods of sun tomorrow again, even though we aren't going to see temperatures be bumped up above freezing, there will be some melting but it's going to turn to black ice. So again, it's going to be a big concern. Just keep that in mind as we head into the weekend. Warmer conditions on Sunday with a high around 40 degrees, 40 on Monday as well. And it looks like we have another shot of the snow as we head into next week. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention want healthcare workers and nursing home residents to get the COVID-19 vaccine first. One of those residents has a good reason for wanting to get that done as soon as possible even at 100 years old. Susan Elizabeth Littlefield has the story. It's Christmas party day at Eagle Crest in Roseville, a socially distanced affair. And distance is unfortunately what residents like Bill are used to. I guess it just uh, makes you feel like you're, you're sort of get left behind. And that's a first for this life embracing 100 year old. The doctor of agriculture and his beloved wife started this loving and social family, a family he'd like to see again soon. So he has a plan. I definitely want the vaccine. I've already 
put in my order. Eagle Crest is part of Presbyterian Homes, 40 sites and 8,000 Minnesota residents. They are preparing to get the vaccine as soon as next week. People are definitely excited. I know there's some apprehension too, um, just because it's so new and all of that. But I think overall it's um, an air of excitement. It's just one of those protections that science has been able to produce in a reasonably short time. And I think it would be foolish not to take advantage of it. So to serve Bill and the other eager recipients, administrators will turn their COVID testing system into a vaccination system, carting doses room to room. CVS will help give doses to workers and residents within one day and follow up with a second dose three weeks later. My hope is just getting the families back into the building. I mean, they're just such a critical piece to the overall well-being of uh, the residents. Bill says he can't wait to see his great-grandchildren and get some true fresh air. Maybe even at my age, I might even get one trip to the North Shore. It's as small as a coin, but a big danger if ingested. Button batteries are common, found in many items, but with the holidays approaching, doctors are sending out a warning. Mandy Gaither has more in today's Health Minute. They're found in remotes, key fobs, toys, even some holiday carts, but button batteries can be dangerous if swallowed. This can be really fast. This can really critically injure a child and be fatal within a matter of hours. Dr. Manisha Agarwal has seen firsthand the dangers of button battery ingestions as a pediatric ER doctor at Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. It can very easily become stuck in the esophagus. And even though the button battery might not be working for whatever toy or remote control it was in before, it usually still has some charge left. And so when that charge is in the esophagus, it can injure it, it can start eroding through the tissue, and that is what can usually cause significant damage and make that ingestion so fatal and deadly. Each year, U.S. poison control centers get more than 3,500 reports of button battery ingestions. Stopping it from happening is simple. Keep button batteries out of sight and reach for small children. Check the screws on toys and devices children have access to and keep loose batteries locked away. Finally, don't wait if you think your child may have ingested one. The most important thing you can do is to go immediately to your closest emergency department. Don't delay care. For today's Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. 2020 is coming to an end, and if getting your finances in order is a goal for the new year, you may not want to wait until the clock strikes midnight on December 31st to make those money moves. Mandy Gaither has five strategies that should be on your year-end financial checklist. Before you say goodbye to 2020, make some money moves now. In order to have a prosperous next year, experts say it's critical to invest your time in these five year in planning tips. Number one, increase contributions to your retirement plan. If it's not too late to max out your 401k, do it now. Give yourself a Christmas gift by taking 1% more out of your payroll, putting it into your 401k. After tax, you're really not going to miss it. Number two, consider bunching your charity gifts. Given the new higher standard deduction limit, your impact may be greater if you bunch charitable deductions into one this year. Number three, create a holiday spending plan and stick to it to avoid ending the year with debt. But remember that gift giving lasts a moment in time. That credit card debt of $1,000 or $2,000 may take you a year, two years, three years to pay off. Number four, review your 2020 spending, especially the last 90 days, and see which expenses can be trimmed. And number five, once you see where your money went this year, set up financial goals for 2021. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mandy Gaither. Restaurants are taking an innovative approach to stay afloat during the COVID-19 pandemic using empty hotel rooms as dining spaces. The trend is happening more and more as temperatures around the country drop, making outdoor dining less appealing. According to Bloomberg, the country's hotel occupancy rates are at historic lows, while the restaurant industry is facing a similar battle. Royal Caribbean has announced the sale of two of its cruise ships. According to the cruise line, they sold the Empress of the Seas and Majesty of the Seas to an undisclosed party based in Asia Pacific. The company said the ships have been in service for more than 30 years. It comes amid trying times for the entire industry. 
The CDC has upped its warning on cruise ships, now advising that all people avoid traveling on them. Apple is working to make data transparency easier. The company is rolling out nutrition labels for apps. It breaks down what kind of data is collected and shared for each app, from financial and location information to browsing and purchase history. The feature debuted Monday, and labels will be added to more apps in the days ahead. Developers were previously required to have a privacy policy and link it to their App Store product page. The new labels will package them into a more digestible visual format. Tis the season to spread joy, and one teenager found a creative way to do that for his community, even though it's illegal. Steve Denaz has more in today's Take a Look at This. Normally, you drive around to see the Christmas lights, but this Wisconsin teen decorated his car so he could drive around as the light show. It took just $30 of lights to soup up his Camaro, even though it's illegal, which his dad, a retired cop, warned him of. The teen was pulled over by a state trooper who took this photo and gave him a warning. But the lights will stay on the car until Christmas because of the request to slowly drive by nursing homes and neighborhoods to bring a little joy. Like the joy the Franklin County Sheriff's Department shared with a mom of two in Kansas City. For several weeks, the police station was getting calls about the woman walking down the highway in freezing weather. So the officers did some investigating and discovered she was walking to work six miles each way in the cold four days a week. Oh my God, oh my God. The officers and residents in the community pitched in to surprise the woman with a free van and filled it with winter coats, food, and presents for her kids. And typically kids sit back and collect presents on Christmas Day, but not 11-year-old Cartier Carey from Virginia. He'll be the one delivering gifts to dozens of families. I said, why not just help them instead of just seeing them struggle every time? Carrie is no stranger to having viral moments of giving. Over the summer, he raised $45,000 to buy diapers to help single mothers during the pandemic. And now, this mound of toys in his house is his latest effort to spread some joy in his community. For a Take a Look at This, I'm Steve Nannis. We want to leave you with a smile tonight, and this video is bound to make everyone smile. Check out this baby rhino at the Cincinnati Zoo. This is a Johnny Joe. You can see he's having the time of his life in the rain, sliding in the mud. Poor guy even slips a few times, but nothing can keep him down. He gets right back up. According to the Cincinnati Zoo, mud protects rhino's skin from the sun and insects. Thanks for joining us. Have a great night.